Hello, Phil here from Radio.co and in today's tutorial, I'm going to walk you through how to basically use Virtual DJ 8 in conjunction with Radio.co to get your live mix on air clean, punchy and most importantly, under control. This video is brought to you by Radio.co, the ultimate solution for creating your dream internet radio station. Activate your free seven day trial today by heading to Radio.co and clicking on the pricing page. Now this video will show you just how to load your tracks, connect Virtual DJ to your Radio.co station and start broadcasting live to your listeners. So if you are in need of a more in-depth actually how to use Virtual DJ 8, this particular video isn't quite the right one for you, but there is plenty of guides online from the provider themselves and some old user cases on our website too. So a bit of context. Virtual DJ 8 is a powerful and user-friendly audio mixing software that replaces traditional vinyl or CD decks with a sleek digital interface and advanced features like sandbox and editor mode. Now, whether you're on Windows or Mac, you can manage your own MP3 and AAC files and you need version 8.1 or above to connect directly to radio.co. Now, for more clarification, there are two ways you can actually use Virtual DJ alongside Radio.co. With the first option, to which I'll demonstrate in a moment, it requires a paid subscription or license to Virtual DJ. It is by far the easiest way to use the software because you can connect it directly up to our platform. But do know that by using a mixer in conjunction with something like Butt, broadcast using this tool, you can use the free version of Virtual DJ to do the same thing. But as I say, the paid for version is by far the quickest and cleanest to use it. So let's get started. So first of all, start by launching Virtual DJ 8 and queuing some tracks on your mixing desk. So if you've never seen it before, well, welcome to Virtual DJ. So this is kind of what it looks like. As I say, it's supposed to resemble, um, you know, DJ decks that you may be uh, you may be familiar to uh, seeing or, or picturing, and I've got a number of files here um, on my uh, sort of uh, save area here. So you will basically upload your files or at least make them uh, uh, accessible on here. So I've got a number of jingles, music, and just blah, you know a couple of other things there. So let's add a bit of music. So I've just got some um, tracks here. So I'm gonna. Uh, maybe add that in there, load that into deck one. And then maybe I do want a jingle. We're going to do uh, this long version like so. So you can load up two at a time, mix between them, decide when one plays and when the other plays. But the first step done is just loading them up. So what we now need to do is head to the cog icon, which is your settings. So if I click on that, I want to go to the broadcast option, which is open up already here. Of course, down here, you can adjust how the actual uh, uh, app works, but we're not looking at that today. We're just going to connect for a broadcast. And uh, specifically, I need to connect it to a radio server, which is here. So if I click on that. Now, it's going to ask me for some specific information relating to the protocol, um, host, port, passwords. And initially, yeah, that might seem like, you know, it's just gobbledygook. But don't worry, I'm here to help. So first of all, the protocol you want to select might be the default option, which is Shoutcast. There's no need to really investigate as to what that actually means. It's just a kind of server stream and it's, it's a, a very sort of versatile one. The quality, let's just leave it at 128. It's what it is by default. But do know you could broadcast up to 192 on all of our Radio.co plans and our pro stay, uh, pro uh, uh, premium plans will let you broadcast up to 320. Uh, the server URL is your station's host. So um, the host on this particular account here is there. So I'm going to copy that. So you'll find all this information on your dashboard right there. So you don't have to go hunting for it. It is right in front and center. So let's copy that information. Let's go back to Virtual DJ. Let's put it in the server information here. Perfect. Um, I'm now going to be looking at my server port, which is it's got it as 8,000 there. Is that correct? Let's go back here. Uh, no, it's port 80. Let's change that. So it might be from a previous show. And then you need to add in your password, which is your station's unique broadcast password, which again on the dashboard is this long code. Yeah, so again, copy that once more, open a virtual DJ and enter it into my password. Lovely. 
Um, so enter all that info into Virtual DJ's broadcast settings, then save that configuration. You can do that by clicking on the floppy disk icon so you can easily select it next time, which is there. Lovely. So before going live, you actually need to schedule yourself in for a live event because you can't expect to go live when, well, the software doesn't expect you to go live. So if I go back onto my account here, I'm going to go to schedule and I'm going to just schedule in an event here. Let's just say I'm doing one for the sake of it. Three till, uh, I don't know, there you go. Three till half past four. I'm going to enter in the details. It's going to be specifically a live DJ show. Who's the host specifically? I'll choose my good companion, Rowan. We're going to have a backup playlist, some electronic music that will play in the event of anything going wrong. The time's correct. The days are fine. I'm just going to do it as a one-off, although I can schedule it to play every Friday at the same time if I wanted to. And I'm going to click on create. I'd actually recommend turning record broadcast on, particularly if you're doing a really good, cool live music show. You may want to make it available on demand or repeat it. And using something like Mixcloud is a great way of making that show available on demand afterwards. But I'm going to create my event. Amazing. That's all ready to go. Now the software is expecting me to go live. I can now use whatever means I want to do that, whether it's through a mixer desk where I use something like but or for the purpose of this demonstration, we're using Virtual DJ. So when I'm all ready to go, I come to Virtual DJ and I would then click start broadcast. But I also may want to just start playing a little bit of music first of all, like so. So I've got track one here. I've also got... Of course, you can say I'm not really a DJ by trade. I've got two things playing at the exact same time. But, you know, it's just the point of showing you kind of how it's going to look. So I can adjust all these things here. There you go. All you fellow DJs are going to be cringing at this awful uh, mix. But as you can see, you know, this is basically how it uses, you know, you can inject, you can remove, you can swap out, you can add in another sort of jingle ready to go or another piece of music ready to go. But well, that's honestly kind of all that's involved, really. It's entering that specific information on your radio.co dashboard, clicking start broadcast, and away you go. And as those reminders said on that settings page, you will require the, the pro, the, the licensed version of Virtual DJ to hook up directly through that uh, broadcasting means. And it bypasses the need for using any other specific kind of uh, equipment and, and other software and like that. And of course, if you ever want to go and listen to your station, you can go to your uh, radio.co account. So if you want to alert people to this show that you're doing, uh, go to the listen tab. At the very least, send people a link to your station, direct them to your website if you've got a web player on there, or preferably you have a mobile app or a smart speaker Alexa skill and you're asking people to listen to your station through there. But yeah, if you've ever wanted to bring your own DJ mixes to life in a very easy, convenient way, then look no further than using Virtual DJ. As I say, it's really easy to use. It's very intuitive. And uh, yeah, certainly made me feel like a DJ. Uh, as always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit like, click subscribe and ring the bell icon so you can be alerted to many more tutorials that we make available just like this one. And speaking of tutorials, head to our help center, help.radio.co or subscribe to our radio.co channel. And for more ways to connect with your radio.co station, again, you will find tons available there. Anyway, thanks for watching. Take care and happy broadcasting. Now, let's, uh, let's get this show on the road. And just before you go, have you ever thought about launching your very own radio station? Now, what if I told you that it's literally never been easier to do just that? Especially with our award-winning Radio.co platform at your fingertips. And broadcasting experts there to guide you all the way. Want to know how? Then book in a free demo by visiting Radio.co forward slash demo to schedule in a quick, casual, helpful conversation with myself or a colleague. We'll even give you 20% off your subscription just for attending. It's all right, isn't it? We'll show you just how easy it is to get your own internet radio station up and running in mere minutes. Whether it's building playlists of your favorite music, scheduling in a live, real-time program, even building your very own branded mobile apps, Radio.co does it all. Still interested? Well, visit Radio.co forward slash demo and let's live out your dream of running your very own global internet radio station.